Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 4, and this is going to be verse 9, just verse 9. This is the third of the three signs that God gives Moses to help persuade uh, his hearers that, yeah, God sent him. So here it is, verse 9. But if they will not believe even these two signs or heed what you say, then you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and the water which you take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. Now, here's kind of an interesting sign here. Yeah, number three here is quite interesting because the Egyptians, the, the Nile was kind of the source of everything to them. Uh, the Nile was uh, really big for them. So in this sign, the, uh, it's going to be transformed into blood, and it's not turning back. So that's kind of a foreboding piece. Now, in Stewart's commentary on Exodus, uh, it's quite interesting here what he says. By the Egyptians, the Nile was itself considered a god. Here's what Stewart writes. Since at all times ancient Egypt, including the Egypt of Moses' day, was pantheistic, it is hardly surprising that at all times the Nile was worshipped as a great god. He goes on to say, the early Egyptian name for the Nile is vocalized Happy, the same as the name of the Nile god. Happy was represented in Egyptian iconography as a male slash female deity. Wow, shades of 2023. It was represented as a hermaphrodite, capable thus of both fertilizing that land and then also nourishing it, unquote. So, happy. Yeah, what an interesting name. But that was the name of the Nile. Sort of just a coincidence that in English, happy kind of has that meaning different. And, you know, some of the other Nile gods included Osiris and the crocodile god and a god named Subic. And uh, so, yeah, they've got lots of deities kind of, kind of stacked on top of each other, kind of all through the the mythology of the land and the, the thinking of the land and didn't all coincide. They couldn't all be, I guess, the same God. But in, in Egyptians, you know, like, hey, the more gods, the better. So in that, it's in that context in that God gives Moses this third sign of taking the water from the Nile. It wasn't, couldn't take it from anywhere else. Take the water from the Nile, pour it on the dry ground, and yeah, it's going to turn into uh, the nasty blood there before them. So kind of an interesting piece. God is kind of going after these the real God is going after these Egyptian fake gods in this kind of pantheistic setting. And, you know, in, in Egypt, you know, basically all the dry water, the source was the Nile, the, the source of the food and everything. Irrigation for the food was the Nile. The Nile was kind of like Egypt. E Egypt and the Nile go together. And uh, for God to attack then straight on, like, boom. And here's another sign he gives is uh, being able to turn the water into blood the water of the Nile, that's a pretty big sign, and so that's what God gives Moses. So he equips him with these, these voices, these three voices, to speak to the Hebrews in captivity. And all these signs that God gives is kind of an affirmation of the superiority of the Hebrew God, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh. He is superior to all these fake gods that the, the Egyptians are dealing with all day long. The true God, the one and only God, he's, he's more powerful than that, all that nonsense. And there's a hint here, there's a pretty strong hint because, you know, he turns the water into blood. Remember, under the 10th plague, we're getting way ahead of the story. But guess what? The firstborn of all the Egyptians is going, are going to die. So there's kind of that foreshadowing of it right here with the water turned to blood. There's going to be blood spilled. If you get in the way of my people and my deliverance of my people, it's going to cost. It's going to cost a lot to Egypt. So God is kind of foreshadowing that with these signs and Moses is going to go do them. Now, these signs aren't going to stop Pharaoh, of course. Uh, Pharaoh is a determined, stubborn guy, and, you know, the signs are going to, he, he can take these and all, they'll fall off his back like water off the duck, you know, all day long. But these signs may not stop Pharaoh, but guess what? These signs are going to kind of be like little viral videos and things. They're going to go viral in Egypt. And you better believe that when, when Moses confronts Pharaoh and throws, starts throwing the signs that are going to be, you know, the ten plagues, he starts throwing and he throws the, the first one and the second one and so on. The word's going to go out. The word's going out through all Egypt. And even these signs that are going to go and be repeated across uh, through the Hebrew people that, yeah, God is coming to deliver us. Check out these signs. This is going viral. So this will be the talk of Egypt all over the place. God knows what he's doing. And he puts these signs out there, these voices. And although Pharaoh is going to be stubborn, uh, there's going to be a lot of people thinking and talking and chattering about these signs. Hey, I thought Subic could handle that stuff. But no, turns out the Hebrew God is... Uh, infinitely ahead of Subic. Oh well. So anyway, interesting times coming up, coming right up. 
And uh, here we see Moses, God gives him some signs, but he's still arguing and we'll carry on and see, he wants to sort of unvolunteer. Let's find out how that goes as we keep on. See you tomorrow morning.